So you, you, you mentioned uh, that this is a very instinctual process that you do, but I'm, I'm still determined to, uh, to get out of you. Like, you know, what, know. what are some of the things that, that, that really, so for instance, like uh, with Woody Allen, you mentioned that uh, some of the directors you work with, you have different, you have different styles depending on what they, what they want. What does Woody want? What are, what are some things that you know that when you were working on one of his films, you, you know that's just, that's just what you're looking for? Are there, are, there, are there any set guidelines or philosophies? I mean, I think that he likes actors who are very real. He likes a real acting style. He likes actors who speak like real people. And he is very resistant to things that are overly theatrical. And he'll always say to actors, you know, if those words don't feel comfortable coming out of your mouth, change them. Because I want it to, s I want you to be like a real person. Um, secondly, I, I would say that um, he is, you know, he writes such great parts for women, and he has very particular uh, ideas about women. And it's very, you know, if he, certain women he finds really beguiling, and certain women he finds attractive, but not that interesting to him. And it's not always in keeping with the rest of society. I mean, it's not in keeping with the rest of, of Hollywood, say. So I, I kind of have gotten a bead on what kind of actresses he likes. And actors, too, but he's, it's more distinctive with women, I think, for him. Not surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe um. it. Uh, I, I realize that now you're you're working exclusively with Woody Allen. But uh, one thing I've really noticed, just as a journalist, is is how much uh, the internet has really affected media in general. Uh, casting news has become, you know, when somebody finds out about uh, there's a new superhero movie coming out, and people go gaga over over just who has been cast in the movie, and the movie's not even close right. to being shot. Has this affected you in any way as far as uh, things getting leaked or having to keep things a little more secretive to, to oh, avoid? Well, I, we go to a huge amount of trouble. We put so much energy into keeping things secretive because he, he, when, an, when he offers his, a, a part to an actor who can be a super famous actor, he has somebody deliver the script to their home at a designated hour and pick it up X number of hours later, whatever the actor says they'll need, four hours. And if the actor feels trustworthy to him and is a very high profile actor, he may let them keep it overnight. He will not let their agent read it. Um, he, you know, we're, he, he, he's, they're not allowed to ever tell the story. He's very private, very, very private. Uh, you won, uh, you won an, an Emmy uh, in, what year was that, 1993, I believe, for Angels in America. Uh, it's, it's strange. Why aren't there more, you know, why aren't there awards or accolades given to, to casting directors? Do, do, you, do you have any uh, insight to why there, there's no, I mean, I feel like there's an appreciation for every other role out there, and yet. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big ongoing subject that is talked about, I mean, I think the movie, the documentary casting by, which is, if you haven't seen it, you should. I think it's so well done and a lot of fun, don't you think? It is, yeah. Anecdotally, a lot of fun. Um, uh, I think that's helped a lot. People under sort of stand what the problem is. I mean, I, thi I think that um, I have two theories about why it hasn't happened yet. One, I think, because as I said, I don't think it was a profession of real influence until fairly late. It wasn't uh, in one of the original craft unions that always was recognized. Um, and so it really wasn't until maybe, you know, 45 years ago or something that people really appreciated what was going on. I mean, before Marion did movies, she cast live television, which in New York was very demanding. They were full plays that were put on television. Um, they were called things like uh, Playhouse 90, if you've ever heard of her, Crap Theater, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Um, and she cast so many people in their first parts, you know, were like Robert Redford and James Dean and all these people in their first parts. 
But you know, people really didn't know that, that, that kind of thing. I don't think until maybe the 70s they started appreciating that. So, and also it was, so, in it, so it's a late, a late comer of a profession, but secondly, early on it was a profession dominated by women. And I think that that probably gave, gave it less weight in a certain way. It was an underpaid profession. Um, casting directors really didn't, Marion was among the first of two to get a full, to get credit, to get a, and to get, then to get a main title credit very late in the game. So I think it's it, it's just taken a while to catch on, and then, you know, a lot of people will say um, that, uh, you know, wh where does a director's responsibilities begin and leave off in terms of casting? I mean, isn't it really a in the end a director? The directors made the decisions, and you know, a casting director, it blurs. How will we ever know who's made the decision? But you could say that about an editor. There are lots of directors who were editors who probably mostly dominate their own editing room. Or there are lots of directors who were cinematographers who probably really, it's their idea what a movie's gonna look like. So um, I think people are kind of um, beginning to understand that the contribution casting directors make, um, ca casting directors now, as of this year, have their own branch of the Motion Picture Academy. So we're now represented on the Board of Governors. That's a huge step forward. Um, I, that doesn't mean we'll have an Oscar category anytime soon, but I think it is a, a step forward. What have been some of the great challenges, you know, whether it be within within certain films or working with certain directors that uh, that you've had over the years? I mean, have, have, have there been any films that were maybe uh, more difficult or complicated for whatever reason? You know, I guess um, every movie or many movies are challenging in their own way. You know, I, I think, that, I mean, they're all complicated in different ways. I think that sometimes the hardest thing is when you're casting a movie and you're looking for your lead and everyone that you feel, sometimes you feel like there, the, there's such a short list of people who could really play it that you'd really want to watch that would play it that would make it effective and fun for the audience and whatever. And uh, I mean, that, that does happen. And you know, in fact, Woody's movie that's coming out this summer, Magic in the Moonlight, if we hadn't gotten Colin Firth, which we thought we might not at first, we were really hard pressed to know what to do next. So then, then it, th this is what's so challenging is, instead of going to the sort of the next best idea in that same job description in a sense, that same character description, you have to sort of start to think creatively about how a part can be played that you might never have thought of originally. A good example is actually Midnight in Paris, which was written for um, a young man in his 20s at the beginning of his career, and very much a Woody Allen kind of character. And Woody had tried to make this movie several years before he actually made it. And we never really could, we never really got, there were a lot of people who, he doesn't get turned down very much, but he did get turned down by people, young male movie stars, who maybe regret it now. Kind oh, I, I, I gotta <laughs> know, who, who has turned down Woody Allen? No, very few, but in this case, we did get turned, it, it, you know, I think in, in, in our country anyway, um, there are certain male actors, there is such demand for them that uh, they, they can be kind of high maintenance and hard to get, whatever. But at any rate, in this particular case, they might have been right because they might have say, said to themselves, you know, I'm playing a young Woody Allen in this and I don't want to do that. That, you know, that I will, you know, it will be his voice and I'll be seen as just sort of a vehicle for his, his voice or whatever. So when it came to making it again, we spent months thinking about it. Months on, I mean, hours on the telephone. Hours and hours and hours of what could we do. He really wanted to make this movie. And using Owen Wilson was the farthest thing from his mind. It, in a certain way, Owen Wilson isn't the kind of actor he works with at all. 
But we thought, well, why not? It's more interesting in a way. Make him a screenwriter from California who has this passion rather than, uh, we've all seen the young man dealing with it. Isn't it more fun if he's a, somebody who's disillusioned with what he's been doing, who's also old enough to have read all the old writers and really appreciate them in a certain way. So that, that was incredibly, incredibly challenging and rewarding because I think it made the story work better because Owen Wilson has his own voice, you know? Yes, he does. Uh, I don't know how we're doing on time. Uh, oh, there's a clock right there. Uh, uh, definitely want to give a chance to, to you guys to, to ask questions to Juliet. Yes? What about Rachel McAdams from the same movie? Was she um, she was. I mean, we we did um, we did uh, consider a number of people, but thought she would be great, and we were lucky to get her. So, yes. Have you ever regretted uh, any decision? I mean, I mean, that that is that is uh, you thought that this man would be perfect for that role, for that role, and then you saw the show and. No, he shouldn't be there. You know, it's funny, people... Before, before, uh, I just want, I want to make sure we get the, in case, since we're recording this, uh, the question was about uh, if you've had any casting regrets. Well, you know, interest, somebody asked me this the other day, and interestingly, not really, not, I mean, not really that I had any control over. I mean, not, not to be grandiose or something, but usually, you know, it's really worked out okay. Of course, directors are responsible for making it work out okay, when, even when it might have... The person might have seemed a little not as good as the director maybe thought they might be in terms of their depth of talent, but the quality was right and the director made it work or whatever. The only disappointments I've had, and I have one in particular, and I'm not going to mention what it is, of course, but was when a director, no matter what I said, went with somebody that I didn't want and which and and I I thought in the end I was right <laughs> but that's me maybe no one else noticed but I've always I've always had that regret about a particular movie more questions Mary why was the Stepford Wives such a strange experience it's strange that you thought no it wasn't a strange experience I was just wasn't sure how to apply the question to that particular movie. To Step yeah, Stepford Wives. To uh, Stepford Wives. Why, why it was unusual for you. Right. Um, it actu actually, it was, a fun, it was a fun movie in a way because you had to find women who were, you know, very kind of beautiful in a, in a sort of almost unreal way, but that they had to also be compelling. So it was kind of a fun, that was a fun challenge. Yeah. Any more? Yes. Is it true that uh, you were thinking about making a movie in Krakow? Were you thinking about making a movie in Krakow? N not that I know of. Not that I know of. This is how rumors start. He's never been to Krakow, and he's always heard it's very beautiful. He, he, he like, he's been to Warsaw, and he liked it. <laughs> no, he, he, he hasn't. I mean, no. He may, I, I, had th I thought before I came, I'd sort of forgotten because it was so many years ago. I thought maybe Love and Death had been in Poland, but it wasn't. It was Budapest. Another question? Uh, what do you think about working with amateurs? With what, do you, what do you think about working with amateurs? You mean um, new actors, you mean, or new directors? Non oh, non-professionals. Oh, I love it. You mean as actors? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think... I think it's, it's, you know, every person has a quality, an essential quality, right? So if, if, if a person has a teeny part that embodies who they are, I think it's a lot of fun. I think that that is one of the, what makes casting for movies as opposed to theater really a blast in a way. Because, and certainly with Woody Allen movies and many others, because in, when I was starting out, it was the period of street movies in New York, and I did movies like The Panic in Needle Park or... Uh, you know, Cotton Comes to Harlem or Cross 110th Street. You, there's nothing like a real face, a real person, and it 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 was so, it, it's really fun and such an interesting time. And you know, I mean, in so many movies, we've used real people, real members of the mafia to play mafia 
people and so forth and so on. Re in, back in the uh, 70s, he real Hell's Angels to play Hell's Angels. I think it's really fun. I mean, they don't often play big roles. They just play what's within their ability, but I think it's fun. Uh, re regardless of, uh, I, th I think you may, may have been avoiding the, the people who did not want to, uh, to play, you know, the surrogate Woody Allen, but I am curious throughout your, <coughs> pardon me, uh, throughout your career, uh, who are some of the some of the ones that got away? Who who are you know much like like Alec Baldwin? I, I can I can't even imagine how different that movie would be with Alec Baldwin. What what are you know some movies where you were hoping to get somebody, but for whatever reason it didn't work out? That may have changed what these movies are, but history is wow. now different. Um, you know it's funny because in the end you always do work it out. So you don't say if only. It's funny how rarely one says if only so and so had played it. You, you usually do figure it out. Um, I have to think about that one because I, you know, uh, I've actually never thought about that before. It always feels at the time like this enormous crisis. That oh my god, you know, like that two weeks where we thought out we were going to have a a. A scheduling conflict with Colin Firth. I thought, oh. but we would have figured it out. We would have figured it out. You always do. Thank you for so much for coming out today. Once again, Julia Taylor.